Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be putting an i5-12600K in the NZXT H1 case. I just wanted to see if this case could actually cool the new processors. I'm kind of excited. It's a cool looking build. I like how small it is. It's a lot smaller than this. It's definitely, it takes up a lot less space on the desk. So I ended up putting a, an EVGA 3070 in there. Let's see how the thermals are. I'm, all, I'm, I'm actually going to make sure the GPU is fine also because it's such a tight build. So I'm gonna test the GPU temps. I'm also gonna check obviously the CPU temps. I just wanna see if this cooler is capable of cooling it. Let's go ahead and check it out. Should be sicko mode. <laughs> It took me a little, a little longer to build it because I didn't have the right brackets at first. So I actually had started another day building it and then I ran into the issue of the bracket. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have the right bracket. So they sent me this packet. So it came with a bracket. It came with another bracket for a different cooler, not for the H1. NZXT insisted that these were the right screws. This is the right bracket. The bracket was the right bracket. The screws, they weren't the right screws. So the way it should work. This goes behind the motherboard. This screw is supposed to go in and when you have all four, it secures it to the motherboard. The water cooler, you put it on top and then you're, you're supposed to use this little, it's like a screw nut, whatever. You're supposed to use that to secure the water cooler. The only issue is the thread type is totally different. It doesn't, it doesn't screw in at all. It just falls right through because this is too thin. This is a thicker thread type. That was my dilemma. I, and I kept emailing them, we went back and forth. They kept telling me that's the right bracket, you know, it should work. Tried it multiple times. I was like, dude, like, come on. Bracket's the right bracket. The screw is not because this is what came with the cooler or this is what came with the H1 case. Eventually they just told me, hey, we can't really help you. You have the right bracket. That's, that's about it. So I was like, really? Luckily I had this cooler with me. So I opened this to see if there's any screws that would fit. And I was actually able to use the screws for the Kraken 120. I didn't know if it was gonna actually adhere properly or if there's gonna be too much space. So it was a little flimsy because I felt like I could move the cooler. But once I put it together and everything, it, it ended up working. So luckily because I had the other cooler, I was able to make it work with this. The screws that came with this case didn't work with this bracket. It just they were a different type. I mean, NZXC said it should have worked with the screws that it came with, but I'm telling you right now, it doesn't work. You have to have different screws. And the way I figured it out was using the screws from that 120. So yeah, that kind of delayed me because I could not build it until I figured it out. So I was a little disappointed, but I'm happy that I was able to figure it out. Cause I still needed the bracket. They just didn't supply you. They don't supply you with the screws you need. Whoa, <sighs> kitty, what the flip? Klaus. You need to behave or I'm gonna kick kick you out. All right, so now that I figured that out, the i5 went in, no problem. The case is a little tight, especially with the motherboard that I have. So using the Z690 Aorus board, so this is the Aorus Ultra DDR4, it was a pretty tight fit. Where you put the NVMe, it's pretty high, so there's not a lot of clearance for the cooler or for the tubing whenever you're putting that case together. So my advice, there's probably a better motherboard that will give you a little more space to work with because it is pretty tight, but I don't really blame the case so much. It's more the design of the motherboard, but I made it work. And originally I had gone with Corsair Vengeance Ram and that was too tall. I ended up going with the, the G-Skill Royal Ram that ended up fitting perfectly fine. The first test that I was gonna do is just a fur mark. So like I did last time with the last build when I had the 12600K, I'm gonna run it for 30 minutes. I wanna see what the max temp is. I wanna see if it's reasonable. So just to recap, last time I ran the test on this one, this is an i7-10700K, but it has a triple fin uh, water cooler. It actually performed really well. So for 30 minutes, I think the high was like 76 degrees on the CPU. Let's see what happens whenever we run it for 30 minutes on this. Ow, you mother flipper, dude. Hey, sell them. All right, so 30 minutes, I'm gonna stop it. It says our, our max temp was 90 degrees Celsius. Not that great compared to the 76 degrees in this other case. And then again, it is a different processor. But still, I already expected that. The numbers aren't gonna to be too great. It's such a tight case and it's a smaller water cooler. So it's 90 degrees Celsius according to uh, core temp. So I actually did it the other day 
and I ran the Fermark bench, the stress test GPU and CPU. And I actually got 92 degree, or at night, sorry, 93 degrees. Most of the time, you're not gonna be putting 100% load on the GPU and 100% load on the CPU. I would say 90 degrees is probably the more real world test if you're gonna be putting 100% load for 30 minutes on the CPU. Let's do Cinebench. So I'm doing the 10 minute multi-core test. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you the score, I'll tell you the, the temp for the CPU after, so it's what, 10 minutes, so we'll see. The max temp running Cinebench is 86 degrees Celsius, which is actually one degree better than when I was air cooling it in the bigger mini ITX case in the NZXT 210. The Cinebench score was uh, 176.20. So that was the temp during Cinebench. Let's do some uh, Fire Strike. Oh, and the CPU is idling at 34 degrees Celsius, which that's pretty good. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's 34 degrees is re definitely reasonable. All right, so I'm doing the Fire Strike Extreme test. It's the 1440p versus the 1080p test, which is just the Fire Strike test. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the temps are, and we'll see what it scores. All right, so after the test, I already ran it. I'm just running it again in the background. So after the Fire Strike Extreme test, you're looking at 64 degrees Celsius max which is pretty good. I mean, you're gonna be using a lot of the GPU, so the CPU isn't gonna be 100% load, it's gonna be mainly GPU. 15,583 on the Fire Strike Extreme Test, it says I did better than 90% of all the results. So that's a pretty decent score. And once again, I have the 30, an EVGA 3070 in there. It says my GPU average temp was 77 degrees, which is fine for that case. But yeah, that was the Fire Strike Test. Let's move on to the user benchmark test. So according to user benchmark, this build should score in gaming 165%, desktop is 110%, workstations 172. So let's see if we can beat that. Pew, 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 pew. So I actually ran it for a second time and I got a little better score, I don't know why. I didn't do anything different, but yeah. So I got 173% gaming, 117 on the desktop and then uh, 178 on the workstation. It says uh, it is performing above expectations in the 76 percentile, so that's pretty good. Oh yeah, and then the max temp on during this test is 71, so that's pretty good. It was a short test. It didn't have a lot of time to heat up, but theoretically I should score these certain scores. I actually scored higher, so that's actually pretty good. All right, so I was gonna play a game on it. I'm not even gonna play like a crazy game. I'm just gonna play Grand Theft Auto just cause it's there and it's, it's fun, it's fun. Most games are super CPU heavy. It's mainly the graphics card. All right, let's get out of there. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't know why they're after me. Uh, well, I was gaming. I did about 30 minutes of gaming. Gaming in max settings, 1440p, 144 hertz. My max temp on the GPU is 86 degrees, and the CPU is only 76 degrees after about 30 minutes of gaming. That's that's pretty good. 76 degrees is good. What did we learn? It works. If you're gonna be gaming, you'll be fine. It'll be a good small case. Any kind of rendering or anything that requires the CPU to work really hard, close to, you know, 100%. I would build in a bigger case, something like this. And obviously you can't put a better cooler in here. You're kind of stuck with what it comes with. So I don't remember with the model. I'll put the model up somewhere here. This is the ideal setup, what you'd want. This is nice, it's just, it's small, it doesn't cool very well. If you want the best thermals, build in a different case with a better cooler. And, and when I say different case, a bigger case. With that being said, the i5 is heating up pretty nice whenever we're doing Cinebench for Mark and that stuff. So for craps and googles, I'm gonna put an i9 in there. Let's just see what happens. I don't expect anything really good out of it. I'll probably burn my house down, but we'll see. Gaming will probably be fine just like it is with the i5. It's not really gonna improve your gaming much. We'll see. Let's 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 do it. That went in pretty pretty quick, so let's go ahead and, and test this bad boy. All right, so we got a build. Let's see if she boots. I have not turned it on. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's booting. So yep, i9, 12900K, 16 cores, 24 threads. OMG. It's idling at 90 degrees Celsius. Just kidding. According to this, the idle temp is hovering between 28 and 31. That's good, I mean, I'm not putting any load on it, so it should do that, you know? I'm not impressed. This is not the ideal case for a 12900K. 
So let's just see how hot I get. Okie dokie. All right, let's start with, uh, I'm scared to do the Fermar test. Ugh. Ugh. Let's just do Cinebench first. Oh gosh, I don't know why I got like anxiety. All right, so we're gonna do the multi-core test this 10 minutes. Let's go. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a little a little nervous. Like, is the computer gonna shut down or is it just gonna thermal throttle or? Cause I, I've actually had a, so I had a Ryzen 3600X. I was video editing with it. I was like, whatever, this should be better than my MacBook Pro, which had an eighth generation i7. And it's a mobile i7. So um, I was using Premiere Pro. So I was using it pff, maybe 30 minutes. And I kept seeing my temps. They were like, it was like 95 degrees in the 3600X. That's not good. I thought it would, stay cooler because I had a liquid cooler. I was like, if my Mac can handle it, this desktop should be able to handle it, right? My processor ended up failing. I was like, holy crap. So maybe I'm a little traumatized because it failed on me. Luckily, AMD just replaced it for me. They said it was defective. So maybe it was just defective, but it, you know, the trauma is still there. Uh, let's see. I just don't, I just wanted to stop working because that would kind of suck, but it's whatever. Yeah, I mean, so far it's at a hundred degrees. Ooh. That is hot. If I were to guess how hot, it's probably like 76 degrees in here. It's throttling because it's not letting it get past 100. Yeah, and it's not using the max power, using about 200 watts. You got some thermal throttle there to try to keep it cool or keep it from overheating too much. Yeah, it's it's getting pretty warm wherever the that radiator is. It's uh it's warm as as butt. Probably not gonna get a true i9 score because of thermal throttle, which that's expected. I already knew that was gonna happen. I just wanted to see what the hell would happen. All right, so, oh my gosh, did it just turn off? Okay, sorry. I thought it just shut off on me. <laughs> you know, it's definitely thermal throttling, so it wouldn't get damaged. It wasn't allowing it to go past 100 degrees Celsius, and I could see that the power consumption was going down and down. Like, it started at like two, 265 at first, 265 watts, and then it would progressively go down. Like, I think when it, by the time it finished, it was like, I think at 180 watts. So it definitely wasn't utilizing the full potential of the i9. At least it didn't shut down during the freaking test. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this because I feel like, man, this is gonna melt something or don't try this at home. So with Cinebench, 100 degrees Celsius was the max temp that it reached. The score on Cinebench, you're looking at 26,326 compared to 17,620 with the i9, it's gonna, especially in the Cinebench test, which really just the processor benchmark, it's gonna just blow the i5 out of the water. I think I need to let it cool down because now my idle temps are about 30, well, at least that's 39. So I'm gonna shut it down. I'm gonna, you know, let, let it cool down for a little bit and then start it back up and then I'll do the Furmark test. I probably won't do 30 minutes. That'll probably burn my house down, so. I don't wanna do that right now. I let it cool for a little bit, so now it's idling at, it's just, it's 27 degrees, so it's a nice temperature. I'm gonna run Furmark, which I'm, I actually am a little nervous. I'll probably only run it for five minutes because I know it's gonna heat up. Like I said, I already know that this, this processor, the i9, is not meant to be in this. I'm just doing it for craps and giggles, but I'm not really giggling, but it's like, dude, this thing is so hot. So immediately we jump up to, what, 84? All right, we already hit 100. And we still have three minutes to go. I'm just gonna turn it off because I already hit the max stamp. I mean, like, it's not gonna let it get past 100. Didn't do well at all. It did 100 after two minutes. Not very good, not very good at all. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, so the, the max stamp of the i9 12900K is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. So anytime it hits 100 degrees, that's how you know it's starting on thermal throttle because it's not gonna allow itself to get hotter than that because it'll probably damage it. So it's gonna continue just lowering the power consumption in order to maintain that temperature, which is good in this scenario. It's not gonna let me burn the house down, but it's still getting pretty hot. Let's see, so I'm gonna run 3D Mark. I wanna compare it to the i5 score. All right, I'm gonna do uh, Fire Strike Extreme just like last time. So let's go ahead and run that bad boy. Let's see if we hit 100 degrees again. I think at this point, if we can not hit 100 degrees, it's a win. What, max temp during Fire Strike Extreme, you're looking at 79 degrees which is good. Uh, on the GPU, you're looking at about 84, which is about the same as last time with the i5. I ended up getting 15,761. All right, so it did score slightly better. So the i5 scored 15,583, and on the i9, it scored 15,761. So almost 300 points better. This is more of a gaming benchmark, so 
it's going to depend heavily on the GPU. And the CPUs, as far as gaming goes, they're very, they're very close when it comes to gaming. I mean, that's going to just blow it out of the water when it comes to like video editing and stuff like that. So according to user benchmark, the virtual benchmark, it says uh, with the i9, we should be getting 173 gaming, 114 desktop and 209 workstation. You would compare that to the, the virtual benchmark for the 12 600K, 164 gaming, 110 desktop, 171 workstation. So I'm gonna run that test and let's see what we actually get. Uh, as you guys remember, this is Klaus. He helped me out in the last video. He's helping me out today too. He just woke up from his uh, five hour long nap. So he's uh, ready to work. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. So I'm gonna tell you what I got compared to the virtual benchmark says I should get. So I got 180 in gaming, which it said I would get 173 in gaming. Got 120 in desktop, which it said I would get 114 in desktop. And then I got 214 in workstation and it said I should get 209 in workstation. So it's a little off, but I mean, that's just what, that's probably what they got and this is what I got. That's the user benchmark score and oh my God, I didn't record the temp. Oh well, honestly, it's not gonna get that hot. Temp was probably very similar to the i5, so. It's not a big deal. I doubt also in gaming, I really doubt it's gonna get hotter, but let's try it. Let's go ahead and try it. 1440p, 144 hertz. The i9 is looking like overkill for this case because you can't even utilize it. It's just gonna heat up. It's thermal throttling to keep it from reaching above 100 degrees Celsius, but it's just, it's not good. It's not good to have a processor that hot all the time. Plus you're making it harder to game. You're, you're clicking controls, dude. And now you're trying to put cheat codes in. Sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, let's get some explosions in there. Let's make the GPU work a little harder. To the naked eye, I can't see a difference between the i9 and i5. I mean, I, I didn't expect any difference. It looks the same. I've actually been on this pier and I've been on this roller coaster. It's actually, even though it's short, it's kind of fun. 71 degrees was the max temp on the i9. 76, so those are safe temps. I mean, no issue either way, either temp. So what do I think? I think you'd be wasting a butt ton of money if you put an i9 in this H1 case. One, you won't even get the performance that the i9 can actually give you. It'll just thermal throttle. It'll hit 100 degrees. It'll probably fail eventually if you are pushing it that hard. The i9 is great. It's just, it needs a better case. It needs a better, way better cooler. It's super power hungry. Definitely not the right case. Two, what did I say one was? <laughs> you won't get the full i9 experience when it, comes to the i9 and the i5 in this case for gaming they're gonna score about the same they're gonna perform about the same you won't really see any any bump in fps at all because it's really games depend on the gpu a lot sir you're gonna you're scratching my monitor dude honestly the 3070 is kind of pushing it in this case too i mean it, the temps were fine it, i think the highest temp i saw was 86 degrees and that was i believe during gaming i don't know I have to check again. Yeah, I think on NZXT's website, I'll have to double check, but I think the high, the best GPU you can get is a 3060 Ti. So what did we learn from this? Obviously just go with the i5. If you're gonna need to do video editing, anything that requires 100% load on the CPU, go with something like this. Go with this Corsair case or, and you're gonna need a really beefy cooler. All right, well, it looks like our work here is done, Klaus. Say bye to the camera. Ah, mother flipper. Look, right there, right there, say bye. Klaus, say bye. I'm on a flipper.